الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصافيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه عباد الله أوصيكم ونفس المقصرة أولا بتقوى الله فاتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد All praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most gracious and the most merciful and the best of his peace and blessings shall be bestowed upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon those that follow his footsteps. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the time that we live in is full of fitan, tests and trials turbulence that could be beyond many people's ability to withstand. And we see people become one of three types. Those that will stand really strong will never be broken. And those that will bend a little, they will give in a little because they're not sure what to do. And those that will break completely. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make us amongst those that are rasikhun, the steadfast ones. Allahumma ameen. What is the difference between the three types? And how do we withstand the pressure without bending, buckling, or breaking? And we know that breaking 
means giving up our deen. Because what's under attack? It's our deen. Deenullah, it's under attack. A lot of people have problems with the Islam. Ghiratan hasadan min indi anfusihim. Just for the sake of disliking you because you're different, or it could be an envy, many reasons. So those that are attacking directly or indirectly, intentionally or unintentionally, the deen of Allah, they want you to give in. This is the goal. So the weak ones, and when we say weak, we say weak, because what protects you? Al-Iman, knowledge. So this is where we have to be very careful. This is why we need to be knowledgeable in our deen. The more knowledge you have, the more stronger you can stand against these attacks. And here I read from Surah Ibrahim alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam. Important ayat and I urge you all to go back and read them and listen to the tafasir. <coughs> Starting from verse 24, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ Allah has given us an example, and when Allah يَضْرُبُ لَنَا الْأَمْثَالِ Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us examples in the book of Revelation in the Holy Quran? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to draw a clear picture for us to understand and act upon. Very clear. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an example of a shajara, a tree. And Allah called it tayyiba. Good tree. And tayyiba wa tayyib wa tayyib here, goodness here is whatever is on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this tree or this word, kalimatan tayyiba, the good word, and the word is a reflection of what? Of your belief, of your thoughts, of your knowledge. Because how do we translate what's in here and in here? What is al iman as explained by al ulama? Ma waqara fil jinan? وَصَدَّقَهُ اللِّسَانُ وَعَمِلَ بِهِ الْأَرْكَانِ So the word that comes out of your mouth reflects your iman, reflects your thoughts, reflects your belief. This is the kalima tayyiba, right? So based on this, this word, good word that reflects your iman and knowledge, it's like a tree. كَشَجَرَةٍ tayyiba, A good tree. What makes a tree a good tree? أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتْ وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاء This good tree, what makes a tree a good tree when we compare it now or next to a bad tree, شَجَرَةَ خَبِيثَةَ أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتْ The roots are strong. This is number one. The roots are strong. ثَابِتْ رَاسِخْ The tree with strong roots will withstand any wind or pressure or push or turbulence because the roots are strong and we know scientifically the stronger and the deeper the roots are the more you grow the more you grow strong the more you grow confident. So it's all about thabat al-asl. It's all about asluha thabit. Your roots have to be strong. Not only this, wafaruha fi sama. What else if you're strong and big and powerful and confident? Tu'ti ukulaha kullahinin bi idni rabbiha. You're productive. Not just a piece of log, useless. You become productive. 
أكل تؤتي يكلها you produce knowledge you produce goodness you produce good things to benefit humanity it's all because of the الأصل الثابت ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون الله سبحانه وتعالى give you example so you may remember remember this Remember this when you're going through hardships and problems. Remember that what's being targeted, your roots are being targeted. How do we know this? And the al-khabith, bad words, and bad does not do justice to the word khabith. Khabith could be also evil, higher degree of badness and evil. This evil word that reflects the evil belief and evil thoughts, it's like an evil tree, a bad tree. What makes a tree a bad tree? It was cut from above ground. What does that mean? No roots, no knowledge, no proper iman and understanding. It looks big and tall and it's standing, but any simple push will cause it to break and drop and collapse. مَا لَهَا مِنْ قَرَارٍ No stability. No stability. Will not be able to withstand any test or turbulences. So these are the two models that we have in front of us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يُثَبِّطُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah will stabilize you with a stable word. Not just in dunya and in akhirah. You want to be stable? You want to have strong roots so you may grow and become productive? Take care of your thawabit. Know that there are things that are principles in your deen that you cannot give up. By giving those thawabit up, you're giving up your deen. And those that wrong themselves, the transgressors, will be led astray. And Allah does whatever He wills to do. Here, my dear brothers and sisters, we talk about the thawabit. Thawabit al-Islam, the principles of Islam that are being daily, daily attacked. That corner Muslims to make them feel ashamed of their deen. To make them feel, wallahi, intolerant, unaccepting of others. And we see the attacks every day. And I want to tell you that those that target your roots, they have a strategy. Everybody works with a strategy. Yam kurun, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Wa yam kurullah, wallahu khayrun makirin. They have a strategy to target your thawabit. Because they know this ayah more than we know it. They know to shake you, we have to cut off your roots. Strategy, logic. We're not talking atifa hawa. We're not talking feelings and emotions. You see a huge tree, you want to take it down. What do you do? You cut it off. Strategy, planning. So people that are targeting your roots, they have a plan. And we were told by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a famous dua, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulubi wal-absar, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. This changes targeting of our roots. We need to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the steadfastness and the stability. What is this strategy? And we see it around us. This is how they do social re-engineering. This is how to do mind shift. This is how they brainwash. It's around us everywhere. It's not, it's not secret anymore. They go through three steps. Step number one is distraction. They distract you from your important work. Once you're distracted, they move to confusion. Am I, should I do this or should I do that? Or is it the right thing to do? 
and then they move to principles dilution and fluidity all of a sudden people get to a point where wallahi we don't even know our principles should we do this or should we not is it the right thing to do or not and here i give you an example to make it very clear as muslims dealing with people of other faith do we have the permission to deal with people with other faith whether it comes to salam greetings socialization acceptance coexistence this principle is always targeted there's a very famous or it became now a very big deal we all know about what happened in palestine yesterday a very famous journalist for Al Jazeera that was assassinated and that lady very well known very courageous the entire world know her let alone Arab that are following Al Jazeera strong an icon respected no disagreement when she was assassinated, everybody felt sad, and then all of a sudden people realized it was revealed that she's not Muslim. Then the whole thing caught on fire, and instead of focusing on the murder, the criminal that targeted her, all of a sudden, distraction, number one, we got distracted, we stopped fighting amongst each other. Then we got confused over, oh, can we even say Allah Yarhamha or not? Complete confusion. And then we got to a point of what? Dilution of principles, which is exactly what they want. They targeted your roots to a point where some Muslims said, if she doesn't go to Jannah, I don't want to go to Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Astaghfirullah al to a point where some Muslims said, I don't feel that she is this or that. It's not talking about hella. Put aside principles. But well, this is exactly what they want you to do. To a point that some Muslims start bringing fatwa from non-Muslims to prove a point. Complete chaos in the past two days. Complete chaos. Because our enemy succeeded in driving us into distraction, confusion, and then complete destruction of our principles. Well done, beautifully played. And we did a great job buying in. It keeps happening over and over. And here I want to take it, take a step back. They work strategy, let's work strategy. Let's evaluate things on a strategic level. Islam is a religion of manhaj, logic, not feelings and emotions. We need to wake up. We need to go back to the drawing board and see what's written in principles. How do we deal with things? We can't be driven by emotions and by shame and by weakness. We have principles. It's the most principled religion on earth is, the, is this book right here. Let's go back to the principles and see how do we deal with things. First of all, we need to understand that life as we know it is only half of the story. There is dunya and there is akhirah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْأَخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى So if we want to evaluate anything, if we want to evaluate our relationships with anybody, especially people of other religion, because this is where it gets confusing. This is how we confuse things. First of all, we need to understand, in dunya, do we have problems with people choosing other religions? Meaning, if they don't choose Islam, can we deal with them, work with them, treat
treat them well or do we shun them and attack them and abuse them? Whoever chooses point number two doesn't know anything about Islam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us clearly in Surah al mutahana and it's a verse that, we, verse that we all have to know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين Allah told us in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not prevent you from having birr and qist and ihsan, the highest of manners and the highest of relationships being kind to anybody. Birr, qist, adl, fairness, justice, kindness, all these beautiful Dealings, Allah did not prevent us from having it with people of other religions. Who said that we have to attack them? And who said that? Quran doesn't say this. Under one condition only. As long as they did not fight your religion, prevent you from, and this is number one. And listen to this. And Allah told us. Number one is we don't allow anybody to dilute our principles on religion. Don't attack my religion. Leave religion alone aside. For a second, we're dealing on earth. On earth, we're friends. We can be kind to one another as long as my religion is protected. As long as لم يقاتلكم في الدين. They're not attacking your religion. They're not trying to dilute your principles. This is the number one principle. We're friends. لكم دينكم واليدين. And did not drive you out of your homes. And it came second. After the religion. The stability of religion. Second is your homes. So those we have no problem with. And to that journalist. We say she was a hero. We respect her. She was an icon. Nobody dares to say a bad word about her. With complete consensus. On earth. These are the rulings. And these are the teachings that we have as Muslims. And we follow it and we're proud of it and we hold on to it. Where do we start having problems when we start talking about Akhirah? Which is very interesting. Why do we, need, why, why do we even need to go to discuss Al Akhirah? After the break, I'll say this, and I'll say this, and I'll say this, and I'll say this, and I'll say this. استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله رب اغفر لي ولدي بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله so al akhirah the afterlife has completely different rules and regulations al akhirah my dear brothers and sisters it's a personal choice allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us la ikraha fi din qad tabayyana al rushd min al ghay we can't force religion on anybody. I don't deal with a person of other religion based on if he's going to Jannah or not. This is not how it, this is not how it works. Choosing Al-Akhirah, it's a matter of belief. It's metaphysical. It's pure belief. We don't know. We haven't seen anything about it. We believe through our books. Other religions believe through their books. And by the way, we need to know, there's no religion on earth that believes that there are multiple paths to Jannah. There's no such a thing. Because it's belief, it's personal. Those that believe there are multiple paths to Jannah have no religion. Put those aside. I'm talking about people with religion. Every religion believes that they're the only path to Jannah. خلاص <laughs> Have we seen Jannah? Have we seen Nar? When we get there, inshallah, we will know. Muslims believe that there is a path to Jannah through Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly said, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمْ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He gave us an order, it's not a choice when it comes to Al-Akhirah. It's not a choice. We don't know anything about it. He told us this way, we follow this way. 
If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said clearly, إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء وما يشرك بالله فقد افترى إثما عظيما. If Allah subhanahu wa taala said He does not accept a religion from anybody that associates anybody with Allah, it's not it's not us. It's the book. It's Allah. If you want to take this path, you follow these rules. ولا الضالين آمين. سمعنا وطعنا. Same thing in Christianity. When they say he who believes in him is not commended. Oh, sorry, it's not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Exact same message in Christianity. If you don't believe in Jesus as a Savior, you're not going to Jannah. This is normal. I'm talking logic. I'm not talking who's right or wrong at this stage. Although I'm standing on member Rasulullah But what I'm saying here is logically, Belief is a choice and it's personal. So if a person believes that they have this road to Jannah, they made that choice. And here I would say, for those that insist on saying a person of other religion will go to a Jannah of a person of another religion, this is insane. Wallahi, it's insane. It's disrespect to a person that chose a path. That journalist chose a path. She was a mature woman. She was an icon, intellectual, respected. She chose a path. Who am I to come and say, no, may you come to my Jannah? She didn't choose that Jannah. Wallahi, I say it disrespectful to her. As if you're telling her that you're wrong. This is how you honor a person by telling them your religion is wrong. Logic. Now we're fighting amongst each other. Is she going to be in the Jannah with the Shahada and the Anbiya and the Shahada and the Salihin? The Jannah with the Anbiya and the Shahada and the Salihin that we talk about, whose path that leads to it? Muslims. She did not choose that path. So what I'm saying here is we need to have respect in separating the dunya and the akhirah. And stop attacking one another. And be careful. It's all about attacking our principles. And this is, wallahi, my wasiyah, my advice to all of you. Our principles are being diluted. This commotion that we saw in the past two days is a person of a different religion going to go into the Jannah of Muslims? Lunatic. People start attacking one another. People went as far as saying, no, no, she's not going to go to Jannah, she's going to Jannah al-Firdaus. Allahu Akbar. We're surpassing Allah's rules here. People would say, no, 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 she's, she is going to be with the Anbiya. <laughs> she made a choice, we respect her choice, Allah knows. We believe we're right. I'm not saying that I have doubt that our path is the right path. This is why I'm a Muslim, because I believe my path is right. Same thing, a Christian has the right to believe that his or her path is right. Eventually, we will know at the end. We're confident in our book. As if we are forcing ourselves upon others. And eventually, again and again and again, it goes back to the principles. If Allah said, as we just read, Allah will never forgive a person that associate anybody with Allah. Who am I to say otherwise? Who am I to say, no, 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 no. You will forgive and you will make her or him enter Jannah al-Firdaus with al-Anbiya. Subhanallah. We need to be very careful. We need to be very careful when we are playing with the principles. Because this is exactly the goal. To make you Muslims, let go of your principles. Respect means لا إكراه في الدين. Respect means لكم دينكم مليان دين. Respect means we can be friends, associates, respect one another, support one another, fight shoulder to shoulder, shoulder beside one another in dunya has nothing to do with our choice in akhirah. As long as لم يقاتلكم في الدين 
وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ As long as you're not forcing me to give up my principles or forcing me out of my homes. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a thabat. اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلبي على دينك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم ثبتنا يا رب العالمين بالقول الثابت يا الله إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الظالمين اللهم احفظ علينا ديننا يا رب العالمين اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم عافنا في ديننا اللهم عافنا في دنيانا اللهم استر عوراتنا وآمن روعاتنا واحفظنا من بين يدينا ومن خلفنا وعن يميننا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا ونعوذ بعظمة أن نقتال من تحتنا إنك على كل شيء قدير إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأنت يا أخي أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله